Shots in the Dark contains graphic depictions of events that may not be suitable for all listeners. We encourage all of our listeners to be open-minded and engage in dialogue with us through any of our social media accounts or email. I'm not a regular mom. I'm, I'm a cool, cool mom. mom. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, and welcome to Shots in the Dark. I'm Ty. I'm Whitney. And this is a very special daytime sobriety episode. (laughs) Coffee, coffee. Yeah, we got our coffee. I think this might be the earliest we've ever recorded. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Which is still not that early, but it's early for both of us who were up late last night. It's early for two humans that are generally night owls. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It's so much easier just to do it in the night. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's hard when you have to be productive after this. Yeah. Also, it's really cold. So we're both taking things from a time where we, obviously we like to call it the dark days, but a time that we had worse mics and a lot more issues with the microphones that we had in general. They were falling off the tables. There was weird sounds in it. And that's when we were out of town doing something for a friend of ours. And uh, and we stayed in a murder hotel, literally complete with blood on the curtains that Ty Holes tried to wall. convince me was not blood. Okay. I also think too, I was trying to make that situation seem a little bit more okay than it really was. Yeah, it was definitely a situation where I walked into the room and then walked immediately back out and then was pushed back into the room. I tried to tell me it's fine, we'll be fine. No. I can't wait for the day that you just look at me and you tell me, no, this is not going to be fine. Well, I did tell you that. And then you were like, no, it's fine. I stay in in cheap hotels all the time. And then Carolyn, our friend who we were helping out, had come in and been confused on why we didn't stay at her house (laughs) instead of at a murder hotel with blood on the curtains. All because Ty decided that he needed his own space. Which he didn't even have it because we ended up staying in the worst bed ever together. Yeah, you sleep like the death though so it was kind of like sleeping in a bed by myself this is true (laughs) i do sleep pretty hard yes like the dead like the dead but you know that's good because i also snore like there's a train ripping through the house you do snore (laughs) I snore sometimes. But yeah, so I'm really excited that we're going to redo our stories because they were good stories, but now clearly we have better equipment and we've fixed our sound quality so much. We should probably take our shots of coffee, right? Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. It wasn't a satisfying clink, but it was a satisfying sip. I am true crime today. Yes. Which, yay for... (laughs) murder in the middle of the day. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, but that's my every day. Yeah, yeah. I told you I was looking for a new podcast and I like went scrolling down all of the ones that I have right now in my queue. All of them are murder and cults. Most of mine are they're either murder or they're just spooky, ghosty, folklore stuff. I had forgotten how horrifying my story was. Which is good because I forgot most of your story and most of mine, to be fair. I want to say that's a good thing, but at least if you remembered some of it, you would have braced yourself yeah well mine is really mine is really soft oh good so we'll end on a light note yeah so it's really funny how i found my story i actually remember back to when i was looking for what i wanted to talk about the first time around the way i discovered this I was like, well, I've never done a human sacrifice before. (laughs) So I just started Googling human sacrifices and this story came up and I was like, done. Is this about the same time as they found that pit? I want to say it's like in Peru or whatever, but they found a bunch of bodies that they presume were part of sacrifice. I I don't know. I didn't know about that, but that sounds really interesting. I think I posted about it on our Twitter, but this was months ago because that, of course, is something that's really up my alley. This was 2011. So is that right around the time? No. Okay. No. Okay. But recently there was an article that I saw. Okay. I got you. Because the story is a little bit more graphic, we got to do the trigger warning thing. First one is I'm not judging anybody based on their religious or spiritual beliefs or practices. I am not the person saying these things. I'm just repeating them back to you after I've done my research. I feel like a lot of people get misrepresented in this story. I'm just trying to put that out there and say that I'm I'm not saying this is an accurate representation of certain belief systems. Uh-huh. The second trigger warning is it's just very graphic. It's going to involve 
a lot of mutilation, like a lot. <laughs> so with that being said, we're going to jump right into it. And I'm going to tell you about the murder of Amelia Espinoza. Which I really like the name Amelia. I like the last name Espinoza. It's really fun. If I was going to have a fun name like that, I'd want to be like the cab driver in Pulp Fiction, Esmeralda Villalobos. <laughs> <laughs> so this all happened just outside of LA in 2011. So it is pretty recent in comparison to a lot of the cases that we do cover. Yeah, because putting space in between sometimes makes us feel better. <laughs> Exactly. So with that in mind, I am trying to be a little bit more sensitive in the way that I present this because it is more recent and it's not like the Victorian era and we're having a lot of fun with it and we can just insert like a haberdashery joke here Mm -hmm. and there. (laughs) So February 4th, 2011, 19 year old Moses Espinoza places a phone call to his cousin Liliana Rivera. See, Moses is a more fun for me because it's singing in the rain. Because Moses, Moses supposes. Moses supposes his toes are roses. But Moses supposes. Erroneously. I know. And I think that last time we had told this story, I was saying that I thought it was funny how you went to that, but my head just went back to the only Moses that I've ever met, which oh, was yeah, the, the one from the bar. <laughs> yeah. So Moses and his cousin Liliana, they were incredibly close and they had a great relationship They talked frequently, so it wasn't too out of the ordinary for him to just call her on a whim. Yeah. Liliana was a practitioner of Santeria, and I know that that probably seems like a random fact to throw out right off the bat, but it is important to say because Moses had some pretty specific questions for Liliana about Santeria and her spiritual beliefs. Mm. He began vaguely asking her things like, what are some of the worst things that people in your religion do? Yeah, that's a great way to start a conversation. Uh, I feel like there's been more worst conversations people have had yeah it just it would scare me because i'd be like Why? Wait, what do you what want did you, what, what you did planning? you do yeah <laughs> you know where is this going <laughs> <laughs> like did you hack somebody <laughs> so liliana was feeling a little bit uncomfortable and rightfully so so she had decided on the spot that something was wrong and she told moses she was coming over to pick him up in just a few minutes because she's a good person yeah and it's it's kind of like how when you and i are on the phone and it doesn't happen all the time but it has happened before that you can tell when something's wrong with the other person and boom one of us just shows up at the other person's yeah. house without your permission and then you just sit yeah. in your house like why are you here because that's what you do for people <laughs> you care about so she rushes on over there and when she arrives at the apartment complex, Moses is already outside by the street waiting for her. Mm -hmm. And he gets into her car right away and tells her that he wants to go for a drive. Okay. And this is pure speculation. My thought is because he jumped into the car right away. I'm wondering if he did that so she didn't have a chance to park and try to come up to the apartment. Maybe. But also, I mean, you know, if you you can... Yeah, if I'm already standing outside and you're coming to grab me or vice versa, then... Yeah, you just jump in the car. You just get in the car. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure if that would have been something she normally would have done or not, but from the dialogue that's about to happen, it seems like Liliana was pretty tight with Moses's mother. Mm -hmm. So I can't imagine that if they were tight, that she would not have wanted to go up and say hi. Say hey, yeah. Yeah. You never know. Speculation, like I said. Of course, yeah. (laughs) So they start driving and Liliana begins asking Moses where her aunt Amelia is a.k.a. Moses' mother, is at. And he tells her just that she's not at home. So she asks him, okay, well, where did she go? Yeah, what is she doing? Yeah, what's going on with that girl? Tell me some stories. Yeah, and he tells her, I don't know, she just went out somewhere. Oh. And then he gets all weird and avoidant, and he tries changing the topic. They continue driving for a little while, and... Out of nowhere, Moses confesses to Liliana that he had killed his mother. Right. Which you'd you think that... Just hold it in, man. Like, you haven't gotten away with it, but, like, at least wait for someone to find proof, weirdo. Also, if you were going to just confess, be like, immediately confess, you should. Yeah. It was pretty close to when the murder happened. Yeah. I would say it was not immediately, but almost immediately. (laughs) Yeah, but still. And Liliana knew that Moses and his mother had their differences. So she really kind of just thought that he was joking. You know, sometimes you're just like, oh, I could kill you. Yeah. I could kill her. Yeah, or out of anger even, like not joking, but definitely not meaning to carry it through. Just vocalizing that makes you feel better sometimes. Exactly. So when he said that, she, in exchange, jokingly said, yeah, really? How'd you do it? Right. And then he told her. 
oh, good. And then she swerved off the road, and she is also dead now because she died of shock. For me, that would have been like, pull the e-brake, run away. Yeah, like, <laughs> oh, ha, 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 how'd you do it? And you're like, wait, but wait, wait, no, this sounds real sick. Okay, I need to go. Have fun. You can have my car, it's fine. <laughs> I have to stop at the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, there's a police station. Oh, um, I have a flat tire that I just accidentally have to go in here for. But Liliana is, I don't want to call her the hero, but she's like the good guy of the story, yeah. you know? Well, I can't imagine that she's the bad guy. Exactly. Because she's not. There's yeah. clearly one bad guy. Yeah. He told her how he did it, and he had confessed to Liliana that he had first strangled his mother. Oh, okay. Then he skinned her. Oh, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And after that, he used an electrical saw to cut her into pieces. Like one of those ones you cut up turkeys with? I tried really hard to not say, like, what kind of saw it was because I don't know tools. Uh We have this joke about how I didn't know what a vice was. I called (laughs) it the squeezy thing. And Whitney just never let me live that down. No, I will never (laughs) let you live it down. Because it was really confusing because I was like, do you mean a vice? It's the it's the squeezy thing, yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I built my whole bedroom, but that's okay. Yeah, if I ever need to work on something, I'm calling you. <laughs> yeah, you call your dad, which is me. Moses also told her that he had put the, quote, meat in the refrigerator. Oh, good, yes. And that he had some of her bones in one of his backpacks. But why, though? Just want to keep a little part with you? I don't understand the storage situation. Usually you see stuff like that when someone's like a cannibal or they want a memento. Yeah, or a serial killer. Maybe the memento thing, actually. The souvenir. Yeah, I could see that. Would you remember what bones they were? Well, I know one in specific. Real quick, we're going to do a time lapse. We're going to flash forward and... I'm going to talk about some things that Liliana said after the case had made its way into the media. Mm -hmm. First, after mentioning that Moses always liked heavy metal music and gore grind music, she was asked to explain what gore grind is. Her words, not my words. She said it was primarily about mutilation. I mean, not all of it. So just for the sake of accuracy, I went ahead and I did some research on it because I wanted to not misrepresent and not have metalheads pissed off at me. Like I would be already irritated at you as well. (laughs) Good old Wikipedia. Uh Uh-huh says, gore grind generally does have gory lyrics, but there is more to it. It is a fusion genre of grindcore and death metal. Mm -hmm. Gore grind is recognized for its heavily edited, watery vocals and abrasive musicianship rooted in grindcore. I also read that they believe the first gore grind band came out of Britain. So another thing that Liliana said was that Moses and his mother had not been getting along since his mother had given him a curfew to adhere to. Oh, okay. And he would break it, and the two of them would fight over it all the time. Also, too, you are living under her roof, Yeah, you little shit. You're also 19, and, and a curfew does not mean that you murder your parents. Yeah. Like, my parents are still alive. They gave me a curfew several times. I had a curfew. I just chose to break it all the time and slowly wore them down until they took it away. Okay, so now back to that incredibly uncomfortable car ride situation. Yeah, yeah, no, I would have I would have already been out of the car. <laughs> so when Liliana realized that he was completely serious, she had decided she needed to convince Moses that he needed to go turn himself into the authorities. Okay, which, awesome, good job. Yes, please turn yourself in. If you don't, I also have access to phones. After he agreed that he would go turn himself in, because she was able to convince him it was the right thing to do, Mm -hmm. she drove him straight to the police station. She's like, I'm already on my way there. Good gal, Liliana. Good lady, Liliana. Before entering the station, Moses placed a phone call to his father. Just for the sake of clarity, though, Moses' father and his mother were not together at this time, and they had not been together for a while, and they lived separately. I mean, I would assume that if she's the one that's imposing the roles and there was no mention of his dad prior to that moment. Mm-hmm. During the call, Moses was unable to compose himself, and between sobs had told his father that his mother was gone forever and that she was, quote, sleeping. Oh. And his father was having a really difficult time understanding what his son was saying. 
because you're speaking in code, really. Well, not only that, but also because he was crying so hard. It was a really long stretch between when he would compose himself to actually get a sentence out. Right. He was able to finally clearly explain to his father that she was dead and that he had, quote, helped her to die. Uh, I mean, you're not a Kevorkian human. You're not helping. Yeah. And you're also not Lydia Sherman. You're not helping either. Yeah. You're facilitating her death, which means you murdered her. Like, get over the blockage of of using that word. You did the, the act. Own it. 